Okay, today I have this PD56 TIAC. These were late 80s, early 90s sort of era. I remember fixing some of these under warranty for an agent for TIAC. I did actually consider buying one of these or one of the CDC ones back in the day because they were certainly more affordable than most CD players back then. But they turned out they were pretty dodgy units, really, just an LED display on the front. This one's just supposedly only been electrically tested, so I don't know if it's going to work or not. They were never real great. Oops, there goes the amplifier. Well, we've got a red LED display on the front. I guess that's something. Shove a disc in there and... I can hear the sled go. And there it goes, it's trying to spin it up. And then, yeah, it should... You sort of get used to the sounds these things make. So you often hear the sled slide. Then you'll hear it sort of make a certain noise as it's spinning up. Then you'll hear it make that sort of squealy noise as it shuts back down again. You can sort of tell what's going on. Often you can tell if it's going to read the disc or not. Hit play, so this may not really have anything wrong with it yet. I can hear it making, doesn't sound like it's playing. You know, we've got the volume up and nothing's happening, so this one's a good example. I'll have to bring the microphone over and That's sort of making a bit of a hunting sound. Uh, this disc isn't the best, but I might try a commercial disc. Try this piano one again. Which just probably gives you the, not the tracks but the time. It says 89, now it's gone to 49. I think that was 89. Was it? It wasn't that many tracks on it, was it? I think this one did have 80 something tracks, and then 49 must be the. I think it was the total minutes. And yeah, that's working, that one. Making that horrible noise again. Sounds like a test tone. Definitely not a good idea to have a test this with blank bits at the beginning of the tracks. That's really annoying because you want it to instantly go and make sure it's picking up the track straight away. So this is fairly typical of these TAC things. Um, give it anything difficult to work with and it doesn't work too well. Yeah, this has got the old Sanyo laser in it. It actually says Sanyo down on the sticker there. It's probably worth giving the thing a clean. These should just, you can just take this screw out and the, I think the arm basically comes out, it's got this spring on it. But I tend to just leave the spring there and just making a few sounds like it's protesting a bit. I forget what these lasers, the part number was, or I think they might have had a few different ones, oh that's right, you move that. Oh yeah, this, so the laser's tied in with the tray. Looks like it's got okay grease on there. Lens looks perfectly clear. Normally, if the lens is nice and shiny, it's probably fine. If it's got a sort of matte finish to it, then it often means it's got dust or cigarette smoke or something on it. Basically, nothing to see there. It doesn't look any shinier than before. But these lasers were never the greatest. Uh, they did fail, though, from memory. They were quite expensive, too, unlike the later Sony ones. SF88, that might have been the laser number. It's got something moulded into the metal there. They had had some sort of type number like that. Oops, we're getting caught on that a bit. So we'll put that back in place. But it pays to give that a clean just to, so you know you're not 
wasting your time messing around and you've got a dodgy laser or muck on the laser but the laser probably in this won't be the best oh, that's a bit odd that's gone down because oh, I've gone too far probably with that or have I got this out of whack now looks like I have actually got it out of whack oh yeah because I messed with it the laser should have been yeah, locked into place while the tray goes and it shouldn't release well, this feels reasonably stiff it does spring around a little bit I think these were like that anyway the rubber mounts are probably still okay they're down where the screws go down you can actually see it in there it's where this pla white plastic well actually it's not that white plastic bit that's like a stop this bit further up the screw hole goes down in there and then it's got this little rubber and there'll be a spring inside that probably not the best they never were the the greatest thing I don't think. Like I say, fairly cheap little CD player. Did the job. Spin motor seems to spin freely. I think to be fair the motors and stuff in these seem to last alright. This might be a good example of when you start playing a especially more modern burnt disc or something and one that's not in the best condition. But this one won't even read the thing by the look of it other than the table of contents so that sounds fine a little bit of a clicking noise then it should go quiet and it stops so it's telling me there's 18 tracks on there and 68 minutes yeah. just cleaning it seems to have made it work now playing what sounds like playing a little bit of the previous track as it gets to the next track that's a sign it's not tracking too well at least this one should I think have everything labeled yeah, we've got kick gain focus gain I thought there was a couple of gains EF balance tracking gain that's right the EF balance I can't remember what the EF stands for now something to do with the focus maybe I think the kick gain is to do with it actually when it's trying to get to the next track but it tends to be like the focus gain tracking gain and that EF balance I think the EF balance was one of the more critical ones in these but all those things with a disc that you know is a, what bits should play and which shouldn't and one that's a bit iffy anyway that's a harder disc to play you can actually tweak these things but it's interesting, it wouldn't read it at all before, now it's, it seems to be reading it. I might play one of those other discs that was really bad. But who knows, maybe just spinning that spin motor or cleaning it or something's made it a little bit different. Just reading that. Or maybe there's an intermittent problem with this thing. That's going to work. Yeah, it's playing a little bit of the previous track, it sounds like. So it's not quite finding the spot between tracks. Yeah, well, this was going to be a good example of one that 
doesn't play too well and it's decided to make a liar out of me again. But that's the fun of electronics. Yeah, it's having trouble. Sort of making this z -z -z noise. And obviously not finding the track. You can hear a sort of ticking noise, it's often the, the laser hunting a bit. Yeah, sometimes if you get play the tracks closer to the one it won't play it, it will actually then find it. Which seems to be what it's doing. We get to this track number eight, it's having trouble. Is it the last track? Oh, but I'm pressing the wrong button. So we know track eight's an iffy one for it. So that could be a good one to try and tweak it on. Track 11 looks the same. And then when we get out to like track 11, 12, 13, no hope. And one thing I didn't try is a bit of a tap test. So it's clicking a bit. So that's how long a bad player will take to find it, if it even finds it again. No, it's given up. So that's often the case with these, they'll just give up because they can't find their position again on the disc. It's pretty if you... <laughs> yeah, you'll get that as well. It'll sound distorted and it's saying... Oh, it's gone now. No. It was actually saying no on this one, so... Computer says no. I'm having trouble with saying no. So once it gets lost, they often have trouble finding them again. So this is a, not a very good CD player, but these were never great. Often that will skip back to a previous track or something, but this is staying on track seven. And now it's kind of lost it and it's gone back to the no. So it's not probably not a bad part of the disc to start in. Yeah, it's having trouble getting to it. playing I didn't think it was playing eight tra track eight before so I just gave that a bit of a tap test and just adjusted the EF balance slightly so that pot's come round slightly more clockwise I don't think I was playing track eight before it's now playing it can we get track 11 maybe not Ooh. <laughs> sounds fairly heavy that one so already just giving that a tweak. Still skipping a little bit. Not so much skipping, but making that clicking noise. That's another thing you can tweak it to if you've got a track that's making that little click, click, click sound. That's where you get onto your focus gain and tracking gain.
Not really making any difference. Someone's going to get me for copyright on that. But yeah, that's actually reading up to the high end of the disc now. Let's have a little bit of trouble finding the track, it's a little slow. 13, it's not finding. That gives you an idea of something that you can improve. It's gone back to 12. Track 12. So often tweaking it, it'll fix one thing and may make something else worse. I'm not sure what this kick gain really does. I think it's something to do with finding tracks. already a little bit quicker than it was before that's exactly why I don't like tracks as slow intros better to have a disc with a continual mix type of thing so it always goes straight to the music as soon as it's locked in otherwise you think it hasn't found the track quickly now track 10 doesn't want to work Track 12 just seems slow, I think, but it's actually just got a fade in. Doesn't like that track too much, there's a lot of skipping and stuff. Press skip forward on 14, it goes back to the beginning of 14, so that's probably as far as it's going to get on this disc. What track was it? 12 or 10? It wouldn't. 10, I think it was like having trouble with now. This is annoying because you've got to double click to go to the previous track. You press skip once, it goes back to the beginning of the same track. Twice, and it goes back to the previous track, so that's a bit of an annoying feature. It's playing track 10 there. Uh, still not going back. But you do get used to the disc you use as test discs what bits will play, what won't, and you go to certain parts on them. And that's why I actually found it was easiest just to use a, a bad disc in the real world and then adjust these settings to suit, mostly through a tri trial and error. But it's amazing how good you can actually get a CD player to work after doing that. Just with a bit of a tap test, gives you an idea what it can and can't do, how easily it's tricked into like this one will just say no when it can't find its position quick enough or can't read the data right. Some will just stop. 
without saying anything. So that gives you an idea what it's doing when it start, comes up with a no thing. So it's, if you hit it hard enough, I'm not sure what that's actually doing when it does that. But it'll kind of read the data, but corrupted. So I'd say there's probably, don't know what the laser's actually doing at that stage. Because if before I did that, it would read it fine. So it's like it's sort of missing chunks of data or something. Is why it's sort of cutting in and out and making that horrible distorted sound. But sometimes if it gets bad enough, and this, this one will just detect that there's breaks in the data flow or whatever and, and just go, say no. Eventually said no, so it seems to lose its tracking or something as well. So that actually skipped to the next track. Here the laser head back to the center. That's pretty quick to find the last. That's track 18. So that's finding that pretty quick. I wonder if this only goes up to track 18, I don't know, it doesn't seem to be... But now we've crashed it. I don't know, it's got there in the end. Maybe on the last track on the disc on these, it's... It seems when you get to the last track, if you press skip, it goes back to the beginning of the last track. So maybe, that's what it did on the last disc, so maybe that's a... A thing with this. Have I got another commercial? Oh, there is a commercial CD here somewhere. I can't always trust these burned discs. What's the other one? Who knows? One of these will be not too good. Be more so try it on it. I think this is fairly mint condition, this disc. Just 18 tracks again.
the often stop on the disc will be enough to shut the thing down that all when it I think it loses track of the data stream no, it actually no, yeah, there it goes no so I think the there must be some sort of feedback to the microprocessor, I guess, like the time code or whatever. And if that freezes for long enough, I guess it knows it's lost data from the disk and shuts itself down. Let's see what happens when I go to track 18 again. Yeah, when I press skip up, it goes back to the beginning. So that is a is an issue with this when I press the skip up button on the last track it does just go back to the beginning of the, that same track so that's not a problem with those other discs that's all I really wanted to know that seems to be reading that alright that is a good it's got a few little scratches and a bit of fingerprints on it so that's not perfect and it's reading that alright that is a longer disc too so this CD player is probably about as good as I can get it it's probably actually quite usable yeah, as long as it's not fit anything too bad. 20 tracks. Let's see what the time was on that too. So I should come up with the tracks and the... So it's 20 tracks and it should tell us the time. 70 minutes, so it's longer than this thing was probably designed to take. Even these cheapo ones were, were set up to the Red Book mostly back then. Red Book being the standard, I think it was Philips and Sony developed this compact disc. And the Red Book was all the specifications of everything. Time on the disc, the track spacing I think, and all that sort of stuff. The whole lot basically that everyone had to build their CD players to when they licensed it to people. So a lot of the early ones were set up quite specifically to that and didn't like the longer discs because, you know, to fit more time onto a disc instead of 60 minutes, if you fit another 10, 15 minutes on there, you've got to make the tracks closer together so then all the tracking circuitry and stuff has more trouble tracking it. If it's set up a certain way, it seems to anyway. And I know the better the CD player, the worse it seemed to be at playing newer discs. actually working quite well which is probably better than most of these things ever worked so this is probably actually in reasonably new condition I'm guessing and it hasn't had a lot of use I don't think it says when it was actually made it was made in Japan which is what I thought can't even tell from the phone numbers when they changed those but most of those became more digits over time. But anyway, that'll do on this one for now. Thanks for watching.